Hello, and welcome to Grug Gaming, and welcome to another episode of What's in the Box, with our continued glare from my lighting. Woo! All right, so this episode, we have got a cube, a Walmart cube. Uh, if you're not familiar with these, uh, if you go into your local Walmart, they probably carry uh, an assortment of Magic the Gathering products. Again, I recommend, if you're going to buy Magic, you usually go buy it at your local gaming store, support your local gaming store, it's where you go play Magic, but you might as well check out what else is out there. So these cubes, what they are is they contain two booster packs, a deck, and then the storage cube, this wonderful piece of plastic. Um, the deck, from what I understand, sometimes it can be a starter deck from some of the starter sets or things like that. Um, you never really know what it is. I can kind of see it because the booster pack, which is supposed to sit across the top, like this one does, and keep you from seeing what's inside. Here we have a Journey to Nyx booster pack. Has fallen off, and I saw cards in here that had the Kaladesh symbol. Uh, Kaladesh is about to rotate out uh, as of right now. This is being recorded in the, oh, what month is this? May? That's what month it is. I'm recording this in May, so in October, uh, May of 2018, uh, in October here, uh, Kaladesh and Aether Revolt, Ammon Ket, uh, a couple other sets are going to rotate out. But these cards are still standard legal. So I figured why not pick it up and check it out. So let's see what's inside the cube here, shall we, folks? Go ahead and... Oh, oh, oh we're going to need the scissors. We're going to need some skizzers. All right, where can we... Here, we'll just... Oh, Oh, there we go. Professional. That's what you're here for. Professionalism. Oh, that that window is full of sunlight. We're going to see if it ruins this video. Eh, we should be okay. We'll listen to that. Oh, the cat is over here watching me crinkle up this plastic. Oh, and now he's going to attack the plastic. Hopefully we don't hear a lot of that off screen. So in the cube, let's go ahead and open it up. Ooh, my hands are all moistery. So just a clear plastic container, nothing too fancy there. And then a little bit of packaging meant to disguise what's inside. Give me that. So just some packaging. Again, MJ Holdings, they buy a lot of Magic product and then sell it to Walmart repackaged. You may have seen other products of theirs. Ooh, we got all kinds of stuff going on. So we have a Journey to It to NYX uh, booster pack. Put that up there. Uh, we also have a Kaladesh uh, booster pack as well. Again, full of cards that are still standard legal. We'll save those. And here we'll just cube get out of the way. Oh, how do you put the ah, there we go. You put it together. And we have a deck of cards. And again, this might be a starter deck, might not have a lot of value, but these cards are still useful and standard. So let's take and see. Let's see what's inside the deck first. We'll do the packs last, okay? So go ahead and peel this open. Woo! Oh, you gotta. Oh, that magic card smell. Don't be here crinkling the plastic. Oh, that's great. That magic card smell is awesome. So we start off with a rare uh, here, a solemn recruit. Actually, let's divide out. In the back here should be, yes, all the land. So it looks like this is going to be a green and white deck. Ooh, okay. There we go. So we'll just take out all the basic lands first. Ooh, let's take a quick look at those. So just some of the art. And this is all the uh, Kaladesh uh, lands. So we got some forest. Repeats of the art there. And we've got the Kaladesh plains. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. I like this one here with this little, like, castle in the background. It's kind of neat. All right. So you get a set of lands for the deck. And then the deck itself. What do we have? All right. We have a Solemn Recruit, a Dwarf Warrior. Uh, has a Revolt, which is one of the things in uh, that you saw in Kaladesh. Uh, is that's, that is Kaladesh, right? That's not Aether Revolt, is it? Yeah, it should be Kaladesh. We'll, we'll find out for sure. I can never remember the two symbols. But 
So first of all, it has double strike. We're gonna, whoa, we're gonna line this camera up a little bit better. I'm sorry, folks, there we go. So double strike, so attacks during the first strike phase and the normal combat phase. And if you lose a permanent on the battlefield, uh, it gets a plus one, plus one counter. So if you have stuff that dies uh, or enchantments go away or whatever, this guy kind of buffs up. Okay. We have a, Jin, a Johnny's Aid, an enchantment. When a Johnny's Aid enters the battlefield, you may search your library or graveyard for a card named a Johnny Valiant Protector. Reveal it, put it in your hand. All right, so this tutors for a Johnny. And we could sacrifice this to prevent all combat. Okay. Whoa. And so we get two of those in the deck. Then we have an Aid from the Cowl. Ooh, all right. So Revolt. If a permanent uh, leaves the battlefield, reveal the top card of your library. If it's a permanent, put it into the battlefield. Otherwise, you may put it on the bottom of your library. Okay, cool. Then we get into some uncommons here. We have a Renegade. Uh, Death Touch, Revolt. Gets plus one, plus one uh, counters. If a permanent left the battlefield when it comes in, one mana. Not bad. So a couple of those. That's the Aether Revolt symbol. So this is an Aether, right? Oh, we'll find out when we open the Kaladesh pack. We'll know for sure. All right, so we have a Verdant Automaton. Uh, it's a common. Pay four mana, put a plus one, plus one counter on him. So, pumpable. And it's a permanent counter. It's not a, a pump that goes away at the end. Got a couple of those. A Johnny's Comrade. As Trample, it's 2-2. Two, two. Beginning of combat of your turn, if you control the Planeswalker, put a plus one, plus one counter on a Johnny's Comrade. I wonder if the Planeswalker will be in this deck, or if this will be just a tease, and we won't actually get the Planeswalker. That would probably be the way this goes. Audacious Infiltrator. Uh, can't be blocked by artifact creatures. Uh, two mana for a 3-1. That's okay, I guess. I mean, it's a common. Cool art though, I like this. This is one of the gremlins, I think, the Kaladesh gremlins uh, in a jar, kinda cool. Uh, we have an L Scout, the Giraper Guide. Uh, pay three and target creature you control can't be blocked by creatures with power two or less. So, make big things hard to stop. Uh, Silk Weaver Elite, ooh, my hand's cramping up today. It's gonna be a great video. Uh, has reach, so it can block flyers and draw a card if you lost a permanent. The turn this comes into the battlefield. A couple of those. A Dead Eye Harpooner. Revolt. When it enters the battlefield, if you lost a permanent, destroy target tapped creature an opponent controls. Ooh. Uncommon there. An Armorcraft Judge, when it enters the battlefield, draw a card for each creature you control with a plus one, plus one counter. So you've built up all these counters. Now you can get some extra payment out of them. Got a couple of those. Got some Lifecraft Cavalry, Trample Revolt. Uh, enters the battlefield with two plus one, plus one counters if you lost a permanent. Ooh, that's pretty good. Make it a six, six. It's a pretty big creature. It does cost five though. Kind of a rough one. Five is a big, big expensive cost. Ridge Scale Tusker. When Ridge Scale Tusker is a battlefield, put a plus one, plus one counter on each other creature you control. Huh. Airdrop Aeronauts. Uh, Flying Revolt. When they enter the battlefield, if you lost a permanent, gain five life. A map, Renegade map. Renegade map enters the battlefield tapped. Sacrifice the Renegade map and search library for basic land. So tutor for a basic land. Okay. A couple of those. Prey upon. Make your target creature fight an enemy target creature you don't control. And they do its power damage to each other. One mana. Reprint from a couple sets. Really cool. Umbrella growth. Each land. Get one mana of any color to your mana pool. Sacrifice it to draw a card. That's not bad. I like that. Like that quite a bit. Good ramp. Put target artifact on the bottom of its owner's library. Natural obsolescence. Okay. Oh, we got some vehicles. It wouldn't be Kaladesh without some cool vehicles. 
At the end of combat, if Daredevil drags their attack or block this combat, put a velocity counter on it. Then if it has two or more velocity counters, sacrifice it and draw two cards. Cool! Crude of two for a 4-4. Four, four. Inspiring Roar, plus one, plus one counter on each creature you control. Regular, just basic pump spell. Ooh, a bunch of those. Four of those in here. Uh, engineered Might. Choose one. Target creature gets plus five, plus five, and trample, or get plus two, plus two, and vigilance. Okay. Then we have Tranquil Expanse. A land enters the battlefield tap. Get either a green or white mana to your mana pool. It's okay. Uh, we'll put those up here in the land pile. You get four of those. So, a very basic deck. Um, again, as I've seen before uh, in these repacks uh, from MJ Holdings, I'm what I'm assuming is that these decks that always come with some type of rare that specifically... Uh, was this the other rare? Yeah, no, this was it. No, there was another uncommon here. They specifically call out a specific types of planeswalker. Um, I'm assuming this deck, if you were to have bought it originally, it would have come with that planeswalker in the package as well. And so they've probably pulled those out and sold those as singles somewhere on the interwebs. Uh, and so that is what you end up with is a deck that's missing the core part of it, basically. Uh, because you don't have the card these tutor for. But that's okay. So let's go ahead and get to these packs. I will open the one that's no longer legal anymore uh, first. So that is going to be this Journey into Nyx pack. Uh, there's the code. You can, maybe you can find out where MJ Holdings bought it. Who knows? Man, my hands are cramping up today on this video. I don't know why. I'm having trouble today. So these will not be legal for standard play. Um, so we're going to send them off kind of in a different pile. But we have a Font of Eternity. The Rotted Hulk. Ooh, a 2-5. Oh, man, look at these cards. They're already... Ugh. That is some... That's some rough warping, I tell you what. Uh, a God Hunter Octopus. Ooh. Rouse the Mob. Font of Vigor. Satyr Grove Dancer. Or Satyr, depending on how you want to pronounce it. Focus camera. Don't play this game with me. There we go. Um, Flurry of Horns. Put some Minotaurs into battle. Deadbringer Lamps. Stonewise Fortifier. Triton Shore Stalker. A rogue merfolk. Now we're into the Uncommons. Nightmarish End. Get minus X, minus X. X number of cards in your hand. Disciple of Deceit. Not familiar with him at all. Deserter's Quarters. You may choose not to untap quarters during the untap step. Tap target creature. Doesn't untap while this is tapped. Okay, and I think... Is our rare next? No. Yes! It is a rare. I would have thought there'd be a little thing there. But Journey's next must have been before they added the Hollow. So our rare is uh, Aegis of the Gods. You have Hexproof, and uh, that's it. Just gives you Hexproof. It's a 2-1 for 2. Huh, that's cool. Then we got a mountain, and we got the little card symbol thing. Well, that's handy. Ooh, in intro packs. Huh. That up there, that'll add copy. Who cares about it? All right, Kaladesh. Standard legal. I can use these this week if I get anything cool. We'll see. Working on a Planeswalker deck. Uh, a, a Chandra Jaina combo is the plan. And I'll probably lose at FNM like I always do. Because while I love the game, I'm not great at it. All right, so there's our there's the answer that I couldn't remember. This is the Kaladesh symbol, which means this. Oh, Aether Revolt. You, you can't see that, it's so out of focus. Oh well. All right, what do we get here? Revolutionary Rebuff. Counter non, target non-artifact spell for two. Okay, another counter spell for blue. Everybody loves a good counter. Spire Side Infiltrator. One damage to target opponent when it gets tapped. Tassel Dromedary. Zero four camel for one white. 
A rhino. Ooh, look at that horn. Look at that horn. Ooh, enters the battlefield, get two energy counters. And when it attacks, pay two to put a plus one, plus one counter on it. Permanent counter. Always good. A lawless broker. When lawless broker dies, put a plus one, plus one counter on target creature you control. Okay? Sorry I keep having to move my hands here, folks. They're just cramping like crazy. Impeccable timing. Deals three damage to target attacking or blocking creature. A Fire Forger's Puzzle Knot. When Fire Forger Puzzle Knot enters the battlefield, deals one damage to target creature or player and sacrifice it to deal another damage. Pay two. Pay three. Curio Vendor, 2 1 for two. Chandra's Pyro Helix deals two damage divided as you choose among one or two targets and or players for two mana. Cogworkers Puzzle Knot. Cogworkers Puzzle Knot enters the battlefield, create a 1 1 colorless servo artifact token and pay two to sacrifice it and make another token. Shrewd Negotiation, five mana, which is always good. Scange control of target artifact you control and target artifact or creature you don't control. So put a junk artifact out there and swap it for somebody else's thing. That is always cool. Aether Meltdown, flash, so you can play it whenever you cast an instant. Check creature vehicle. When it enters the battlefield, get two energy and minus four, minus zero on that object you enchanted. Incendiary Sabotage is an additional cost to cast Incendiary Sabotage. Sacrifice an artifact. Incendiary Sabotage deals three damage to each creature. And for the rare, boom! The Garaper Ori. For four, each player may play an additional land on each of his or her turns. At the beginning of each player's upkeep, if that player has no cards in hand, the player draws three cards. Wow! That's actually pretty cool! So lots of ramp if you have lands, and you can go ahead and draw more cards as I bump the camera. That's great. That's awesome. Okay, so, and then we get an island. And a servo token. So... Not bad. Um, again, value-wise, if you're looking at these, uh, these intro decks, um, the intro decks themselves, I think they cost like about 10 bucks, if I remember right, or something like that for the intro decks when you bought, if you buy them. Uh, and then your two packs are, you know, four bucks a piece retail if you buy booster packs at retail. So, I mean, you're paying a little bit more. The cubes cost 20 bucks, so you're paying a little bit more value than what's probably in there. I don't know what my rares are worth out of this pull. Uh, and the cards are so, oh, I still can't get over this. Like this, the warping on these is crazy. Like insane, like I don't know if you can see how warped that is from being in that who knows? That could have been the box. It could have been the card. Who knows? Sleeves will fix that, of course. Some heavy duty dragon shield sleeves will take care of that. But otherwise, that is our unpacking of this cube. Of course, the most important part of this is the cube itself. No, the cube is garbage. All right, so folks, I hope you enjoyed this. Um, feel free to comment, like, and subscribe. I hope you like these box opening videos we added to the channel. Otherwise, I'm going to say thanks for watching. Please tell your friends, and as always, we hope to see you soon.